everyone um welcome in today's video i'm jennifer from jen w arts and um first of all i hope you're all doing well and are safe and uh, are able to cope with this strange situation um anyway in today's video i'm going to play around with uh, pen pastels and pastel pencils for a while and i'll be drawing a dog for you in pastels so enjoy <laughs> These are the materials I will be working with in today's video. For paper I will be using a 9.5 by 12 inch sheet of pastel mud and a bunch of pastel pencils from various brands and pond pastel pens. Before I start painting with the pastels, I sketch out the line work on a different piece of paper so I can later transfer it onto the pastel mud with graphite transfer paper. I normally like to do this to keep my paper clean and undamaged from erasing and pressure, but with pastel mud it is a must most of the time because much like velour paper, you cannot erase on this surface. So when working on pastel mud, that is a thing you have to keep in mind. I make sure I keep my graphite lines light and not too heavy, even though pastels are quite opaque and most likely cover up all your graphite lines, I like to be rather safe than sorry. Also some colors, like yellows, are quite transparent in nature, even in pastel media. I start by blocking in the first colors with pen pastels and sponge applicators, starting with the titanium white color to map out all the white fur on the dog. Because I'm working on a toned paper, you can easily see the white pigments. After that, I block in the background with a large sponge applicator and a dark green color. I believe it was chromium oxide green extra dark. I never done an underpainting with pen pastels on a larger piece before with these big sponges. So I felt a bit awkward at first and it looked kind of patchy but after adding some more layers and darker colors it started to make more sense to me once i got the background saturated i switched back and forth between the large and smaller applicators or sponges as you may call them so at this point the background is pretty much finished as it's looking nicely out of focus so now let's continue on with the dog now I'm going to block in the darker fur of the dog by using greys, browns and black colors from my pen pastel selection and a small applicator. First laying in the mid grey and brown tones and then add the nice deep black on the darkest areas. With pastels you don't have to worry too much about going to dark in places as long as you are working on a surface with a lot of tooth, you will be able to draw lighter colors over the dark ones. Then I add some more shadows and reflecting colors onto the white fur with ultramarine blue and lighter gray and burnt sienna tones. It's really fun to work with the pen pastels and it works so fast too. I mean pastels is quite a quick medium in general or at least for me it works so much faster than when i work with colored pencils but with the pen pastels blocking in the first layers goes even quicker than with pastel crayons and it is a lot less messy as well as you can keep your fingers quite clean as you don't have to hold the pastels and it doesn't create as much dust also, I really love using the pan pastels to paint my sculptures with, as they work great on primed 3D surfaces as well. So yes, I really love these pastels and I surely get some more of the colors in the future for myself. So once everything is blocked in, I get to the final stage of the painting, drawing all those fine details such as the doggo's soft and fluffy thick fur. And that's when the awesome pastel pencils come in to join the party. <laughs> Starting at the dark patch of fur on top of his head, I use a black pastel pencil to draw in the first tiny hairs and continue down to the lighter or white part of the fur. But on the white fur I make them with lighter pressure and more wispy, so that the lighter part of the fur remains light and doesn't turn to dark and only on the light patches of fur on the neck and not on the face as there are no dark hairs present on the face in the reference photo. 
Then with lighter colors such as cream tones, ochre and white pencils, I go back in on those same dark patches of fur and draw small individual hairs back in. In the face I use a deep blue similar to an ultramarine color pastel pencil to draw some short hairs in on the part where the blue reflective light hits the white fur. As I explained before in an older video about drawing white subjects, white is very reflective just as black is, so there will always be some colors of the subject surroundings reflecting upon the white of your subject. So this dog is no different. And by doing so, you're creating a much more natural feel for your artwork. And it helps letting your subject blend in in the background and it just makes your piece a lot more alive and interesting to look at. I make sure there are hints of blue in the dark parts of the fur as well, but more faintly as I don't want them to become too distracting from the main focus of the drawing, which is the face of the dog. For the final touches, I go back in with white pastel pencils to hype up some of the lightest areas and for the super white details I like to use an extra soft white pastel stick from Rembrandt which is super white and can create quick crisp lines. Again, I am not worried to go too light as I can always go back in with a darker color to add more shadows. So I keep adding and correcting to the final details and when I'm happy with the result, I add the whiskers on his or her snout and call it done. So we've reached the end of this video and Thank you very much for watching this one. I hope it was helpful and enjoyable. Please leave me a like if you thought it was and if you would like to see more content from me in the future, then feel free to subscribe to my channel and hit the icon. Uh, the bell icon, sorry. <laughs> this will notify you when I release a new video on my channel. I try to do this each month if I can, at least that's my goal anyway. Um, also, if you got suggestions or want to leave feedback, then please let me know in the comment section. So stay safe and hopefully until the next video. Have a good one and keep on creating.